Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here. You find me today on a very hot day here at Barnstormer in Maidenhead where I'm going to be riding this, the uh, brand new for 2019 R1250 RS. Now I rode the R1200 RS a couple of years ago, liked it, but obviously a lot of changes for this one. So if you're interested in this bike, stick around and stay tuned. All right, so this is very much going to be my first impressions review. Haven't ridden one of these, of course, yet. Just uh, this is the keyless one. This is the exclusive model, so it's got all the bells and whistles you could possibly want, including the fantastic BMW TFT, which I'm such a fan of. Right, this video is uh, going to be my first impressions review. I'm going to go through the items that uh, I would look at if I was going to buy a machine, if I was going out on a test ride, what are the things that are important to me. So, first thing, comfort. Well, lovely seating position. And really comfortable seat is <laughs> the first thing that strikes me. Let's just get my feet down on the deck, see what she's like seat height wise. Right, my feet are flat on the deck. I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg. Don't really know what 32 inch leg means, but that's what I take in trouser length. And uh, I'm flat on the deck, so no problem at all getting your feet down. In terms of the riding position itself, I'm sat nice and upright, slightly leant forward, uh, nothing too extreme. My legs are tucked up in a, a relatively sporty position though, so I think I would describe it as a sporty position but you're not leant over like you would be on a sports bike. This is very much of that old school sport touring genre. And uh, very much more, I think, towards the sport end of that if that little overtakes anything to go by. It's got bags of power. This uh, R1250 engine now with the shift cam absolutely flies. And I can already tell compared to the old 1200, this is a much, much quicker bike. Very, very nice indeed. Now, if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you may know that I'm a GS owner and a GS fanboy. But I never take my GS off-road because I just feel it's just a bit big for going off-road in the UK. Although I know many people do. So given I never go off-road, why do I have one of them rather than something like this? Well, I have to say, I can't really answer that question. If I was in the market for a, a big touring bike now, I'd be very tempted to look at something like this. I'm very lucky to ride all sorts of bikes and uh, I've recently ridden Yamaha FJR 1300. Of course I've ridden the R1250 RT. I've even ridden the new Honda Goldwing. So uh, I've ridden a few bikes that fit into this sort of category. And my first impressions, having just leapt on this, that this one is uh, up there with the best. Really, really nice. So, seating position is great. The suspension on this, it's got the fancy suspension where it adjusts for your weight. So if you stick a pillion on the back or panniers or whatever, it knows you've done that and adjusts on the fly. It also stiffens up when you go faster, I believe. But so far, just on these B roads, it feels lovely. As I mentioned, this is the exclusive model. It also comes in a sport model and the standard. Now, I suspect, like most BMWs, most people will go for the exclusive because this has all the things on it you're going to want. But it does mean the base price is bumped up. So don't be... I'll go through the detailed spec when we do the walk around and talk about the prices, but uh, you're looking at around about 14 grand for a bike of this spec. Handling is beautiful just through these back roads, though. It's also got the... Uh, Gear Shift Assist Pro, so it's an up and down quick shifter. And given it's a boxer engine, which in my mind are agricultural, well this one isn't agricultural at all, that quick shifter works a treat. Going up and down through the box there clutchlessly, and it feels lovely and smooth. The other big change for the bike as well, over the old 1200cc version, is they've changed the styling on the front, I'm really pleased to say. BMW have decided to go symmetrical with the uh, RS, whereas it used to have that squinty front end, a bit like the RR had and the XR. It looks so much better symmetrical, but again, I'll show you that when I do the walk around. Alrighty, so the handling is lovely. The weight is kept nice and low down on here because it's the boxer engine. I mean, on paper, it's a heavy bike, something like 243 kilograms. It doesn't feel anything like that when you ride it because of that centre of gravity being so low. So much for the B roads, get it on a faster road. See what she's like from a weather protection 
and poke point of view. Beautiful Hadley on the on this roundabout here. It's one of those sort of what I call set and forget, in that you do have to set the bike up for the corner a bit, in that you sort of manhandle it around. I'm not saying it's not agile, but it's uh, it's nice and stable. I think that's what I'm saying. Right, Mr. Hyundai, off you go. Man, it absolutely flies. You'd never guess this is a box engine anymore. That shift cam is just a, a piece of work, particularly on this bike. And this screen, which I think is a standard one, works a treat. It is adjustable manually, you just pull it up and down. I think it's a weight saving measure to not have it electrical, electrically adjustable. And that's fine with me, because I find with things like that, you tend to set them and then you never change them again. So, so the weight saving is probably a good thing. But in terms of wind and weather protection here, big front end, big fairing. My bottom half of my body is completely in still air. And the top half as well. My shoulders aren't being buffeted. I can feel a little bit of airflow at the very top of my helmet, but it's smooth airflow. Yeah, very nice wind protection as well. You wouldn't even need to change that windscreen if you're somebody of my sort of height. Those BMW techies have done some witchcraft with that shift cam. Alright, let's go and try it uh, on a busier road then. See what she's like in town, see what the throttling's like. So I'm just heading into uh, Marlow now, doing what, 22 miles an hour in this bit of traffic. And no jerkiness whatsoever. They seem to have definitely sorted out throttling on these bikes now. The ride-by-wire throttle works really nicely. Loving the BMW TFT, we've seen this before on bikes like the uh, RT and the GS. I think this is the best TFT in the business. Again, I don't want to be too gushing and BMW fanboyish, but it really is. Show me a better TFT <laughs> than that one. And I'm also pleased to see that the RS retains the uh, GPS preparation. And what I like about that on the BMW is it's all controllable via this whiz wheel. Even though you've got the TFT, you can swap between control of the TFT and the GPS. Okay, nothing behind me for a little way. Brakes on the front are pr prodigious and the back work really, really nicely. Great brakes. Mirrors poked out a long way in front it appears because they're attached to the fairing. So, uh, But what that does mean is you've got a good reach width-wise. So I'm not looking at my shoulder or anything. They work really nicely. No vibration there. Talking of vibration, there's no detectable vibration in the seat, it's really, really smooth. For a big old twin cylinder engine, again, the boffins in engineering have done a top job in making this a really smooth ride. I suppose the one thing I would say, if I'm looking for negatives about the comfort, because it is a very comfortable bike, is that there is a little bit of weight I'm just now detecting on my wrists. It's not, uh, it's not big by any means, and if you're on a motorway or whatever, then I think that would be counteracted a little bit by the wind, although you're not in much wind on this bike, as I say. Certainly a bit more weight on the wrists than, say, on something like the RT, where you're sat a little bit more upright. I think the way I'd describe it is the RT is a sport tourer that's more at the touring end. The RS is a sport tourer that's more at the sport end. If you're coming from a sports bike, I think you'd be quite happy with the RS. Ah, lovely Marlow. You catch me on an absolutely beautiful day, as you can see. It's, uh, it's only five past ten in the morning, and it's already 31 degrees centigrade. Look, there we go. You see that there? I only point that out because I often get Australian viewers that say, Oh, you're saying it's hot, but it gets much hotter than that here. But of course it does, it's Australia. But it doesn't get very hot here in the UK. If we have a day that's 21 degrees, that's a nice summer's day for us. So for it to be 31 at this time of day is unbelievably warm. And in fact, the weather forecasters have said today might be the hottest day on record, which is why I've come out as early as I can to ride it before it gets too, too hot. All that said, I can't feel any heat pumping out of these cylinders at the moment. Most heat that I'm feeling is the sun beating on my legs. While I'm stuck in this traffic, actually, and behind this F-Pace, this Jaguar, I can see the reflection. I don't know if you can see my reflection in the back there. It probably looks a long way away on the GoPro. See the lights? Another change they've made here, and again, I'll show you when I do the walk around, is the RS used to have quite a cool lighting anyway. It had like a strip in the middle of the two headlights, which I used to quite like. But now they've made sort of eyebrow lights, or eyelids, I'm not sure which way around, but uh, it looks really cool in its daylight running mode. Once again, in this crawling through traffic, it's uh, the fueling's great. 
commuting to work on this would be fine actually because it does feel nice and low and the weight's kept low it's a very confidence inspiring bike there's nothing ponderous about this at slow speed I really like this I have to say cafe is already doing great business no better country on the planet when, uh, when you get weather like this he said in a somewhat jingoistic fashion the beautiful River Thames looking resplendent today in the sunshine. Nice to be out on a boat, wouldn't it? Or down at the lovely Complete Angler. Which is a bit of a fancy hotel type place. Right, enough of the sightseeing. What I'm going to do now is head up to uh, another of my favourite spots, White Waltham Airfield. We've got a decent car park. I can park up there and I can do the walk around and uh, talk you through the spec in the usual way. Stick around and stay tuned strike that white water right here. It's such a lovely day and this is such a nice bike to ride. I think I'm going to head up towards Henley because there's some nice roads there and uh, again I've got uh, a good little place to do a walk around up there. I haven't been up there for a while so for a change of scenery let's do another on Thames, Henley on Thames. But let's not hang around Mr S Max, it's getting hot. Go go go. Switch gear and controls on the Beamer, exactly the same as on the other current models so it all feels very familiar to me having ridden most of them all works pretty intuitively can't get over how smooth this uh, quick shift assist on the gearbox is on this particular model actually just uh, thinking about the wind protection again on these faster roads there is a little bit of high frequency vibration at the top of my helmet I think something like an MRA Vario screen you know with a little spoiler completely cure that. So I slightly take back what I said about the screen, maybe I would change that for an aftermarket one. It's nothing too terrible though, it's only, it's only when you're at much higher speeds that you notice it. If you're a taller chap it might be more of an issue. Oh, this is really a pleasure to ride around the corners. Got to be a bit careful because this is a brand new bike with uh, barely any miles on it so the tyres and brakes aren't properly bedded in. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the little uh, walk around spot that I had in mind. This is the uh, lovely village of Hurley near Henley. Again, if you've uh, not been down here on a lovely day, then you're missing out. Some great pubs, lovely walks along the river as well. There's a lock and little cafe and boats and, you know, what's not to like? Well, that flipping great truck coming down here for one. Okay, got a reversing Merc. No reverse gear on the RS, unlike the uh, Honda Goldwing. Oh, I fancy driving that down here. Hats off to uh, HGV drivers. If you've ever tried uh, driving something large or even towing something large and heavy, it does give you a lot of respect for what those guys can do, particularly when you see them reverse. Right, let's see if there's a little spot here in the sunshine. Stick it here. Won't be in the sunshine, but you'll get the idea. Alrighty, side stand, easy to get at. And uh, turn her off with the uh, off button, because of course, as I say, this has got the keyless ignition. Alrighty, let me show you the bike then. And uh, in particular, the front end, slightly restored. In fact, let me just turn it on and show you that um, daylight running light I was telling you about. Here we go, check that out. So I called them uh, eyebrows, but I suppose they're eyelids, aren't they, because they're at the bottom. The old RS had asymmetric lights, and it had a vertical light down the middle, which was quite cool, but these are way cooler. So uh, well done, BMW, for making that little change. Alrighty, let me get uh, the other camera out in the usual way then, and I'll uh, talk you through the spec. Okay, here we go then. It's, uh, is that rolling? Yes, it is. Excellent. All right, let's start with that engine then. hope I'm not going to be run over here. I might have to get out of the way suddenly. So here we are. Uh, the Boxer Twin uh, with shift cam. 1254cc horizontally opposed engine. Uh, puts out 136 brake horsepower or 100 kilowatts if you're in the new money at 7,750 RPM. So exactly the same engine as in the RT and uh, GS with the same 143 newton meters of torque. Oh, let's get out the road at uh, 6250 RPM. Uh, the brakes on here at the front, 320mm discs, let's have a look. And uh, these ones have got the uh, Brembo badged calipers, not the haze ones that we've seen on some of the other uh, 
recent BMWs. They work really beautifully uh, and they have four pot calipers and at the back we've got a two pot single disc. Here we go. Uh, let's see what that's badged. That's uh, a Brembo 2 and of course you've got the shaft drive on this which is uh, obviously worth mentioning. Uh, suspension on here, front uh, telescopic upside down 45mm forks. Uh, so this is you know standard type suspension. And when I say standard it has got the clever as I say electronic adjust on it. And uh, at the rear we've got uh, what uh, BMW call paralever suspension which is uh, again adjustable. Seat height on this, a very friendly, I've found 820 uh, millimetres. The good news is, BMW have listened to customers, you can get uh, various options. You can go to 760 mil if you're a shorty, and uh, if you're a taller, you can get an 840 mil option as well. So heights for everybody there. Uh, Weight-wise, road ready is what uh, BMW are quoting these days, 243 kilograms. And that's the weight of it with 90% fuel, which is uh, obviously quite a realistic thing. But uh, as I mentioned before, it carries its weight nice and low because of that uh, low centre of gravity. It makes the uh, bike feel much lighter than 243 kilograms sounds. That uh, fuel tank here, 18 litres, it looks quite big, but 18 litres isn't huge actually with this type of bike, is it? I'd rather see maybe a 20 litre tank on a uh, basically a sports tourer, but there we go. Electronics wise, well, it's got absolutely everything. LED lights, EBS Pro on this one, the exclusive version, uh, dynamic brake light, uh, ASC, which is the traction control, uh, riding modes, rain and road riding modes, the TFT hill start control, all standard, I think, on the RS. And once you go to the sport and the exclusive versions, you get things like tyre pressure monitoring, uh, gear shift assist, riding modes pro, heated grips, the SOS feature, all sorts of stuff. If you want to know the difference between the various models, then I suggest you take a look at the BMW website because it is an exclusive and exhaustive long list of differences between the bikes. Price wise, if you go for the standard bike, according to the website, £12,100. As I said earlier, you know, no one ever buys a standard BMW, you always want the extras. If you want this, the exclusive with the extra bells and whistles, then you're looking at uh, 13,960. And I think this one's also got some other extras on top, like, for example, that exhaust, the chromed exhaust, I think is an extra as well. You get a brushed aluminium one as standard. Uh, three year warranty, as with all BMWs in the UK now, which is definitely worth having. And uh, you can get it in uh, all sorts of colours, actually, black or stardust. Stardust is what I would call a sort of an Austin Allegro. Grow brown. Uh, the sport you can get in actually coincidentally what they call Austin yellow, uh, and then the exclusive is in, in imperial blue, uh, which is what this one is, which is I think my favourite colour. Alrighty, there we go then. That is the uh, the spec of the bike. Let me jump on and uh, ride us some more. Alrighty. Okay, I haven't said what a great place this is. I've never been down this road. I've no idea where it goes to. So let's give it a try. Right, nothing coming. So just while I remember, I must say a huge thank you, as usual, to the guys at uh, Barnstormer in Maidenhead, the dealers for Maidenhead and the local area. Excellent showroom there, if you've not been, do go and check them out, loads of demos. Tell them I sent you, they might do you a good deal. Now, what's going on here? No idea. Should have brought the GPS. Oh, looks like possible private spot. Oh well, caravan park. Yeah, we won't be going in there. Right, let's see what the turning circle was like then. Uh, not the tightest in the world, but I've been on worse. Let's say medium for turning circle. Unusual house in there. Well, what an absolutely cracking day for a ride, eh? Here's the white van of the review. Lovely day to be sitting in a country pub in your shorts and t-shirt. That's maybe what I'll be doing a little bit later, because it's getting too hot to be riding. If that's possible. I'm not really complaining. You know how obsessed we Brits are with the weather. I think it's just because we're so surprised when we get good stuff. Alrighty, the TFT is telling me that uh, my fuel level is getting pretty low. <laughs> There's no ignoring that. So, uh, I'm going to head back to Barnstormer, give them their splendid bike back. So what's my summary, just based on this uh, first ride then, my first impressions review? Well. There's nothing I've found about the bike that I don't like. Uh, I hate that when I do these reviews and I don't give you any negative points. Because people always think I'm just saying nice things to keep the dealers happy. But this really is a lovely bike. It's comfortable, it's fast, it handles nice. 
the seat's comfy, everything works, uh, as you'd expect. I guess if I had a complaint, then uh, to get the spec you'd want, which would be the exclusive, then it's quite expensive at 14 grand, but then you are getting a lot of bike for the money. Handles lovely on these sort of roads. I think if, uh, if you need a touring bike, and you don't want to go off-road, then I'll be hard-pressed to say get a GS rather than one of these. Or indeed an RT. I did love the RT, and I do love the RT. It handles and beautifully, it's got all the same sorts of tech that this has got, but the RT's just got that bulbous front end that would put me off. This one actually is a handsome looking bike. So all things considered, I think I'd have this over an RT. And if I were lucky enough to have 14 grand burning a hole in my pocket, and we're in the market for a new touring bike, then I think it might be cheerio to my GS and hello RS. I really do, I like it that much. Very, very nice motorcycle. Alrighty, well I hope that's been of uh, some interest to you. And uh, if this is the first time you've been to my channel, I don't just do reviews here on the Missenden Flyer, but I also do all sorts of stuff to do with looking after your bike, care and maintenance stuff in the garage, I do trips and tours at home and abroad, basically anything and everything to do with motorcycles. I try and cover it here on the Missenden Flyer. It'd be great to have you join me. Hit that subscribe button and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.